if you want to enhance your images brightness and contrast and colors we're going to be using adjustments in photoshop now there are two types of adjustments there are adjustments and adjustment layers they're very different and today we're going to show you how to use both and best practices for using each of them Hello and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to talk about adjustments versus adjustment layers. Now these are incredible tools that will allow you to make your images more vibrant, increase your saturation, work with your exposure, and even add some color grading. But there are two different ways to apply these. There are adjustments. Now these adjustments are going to be applied directly to the layer that you're working on. Adjustment layers by difference, those are gonna create their own layers that you can turn off and on at any time. You can edit those at any time and they come with a layer mask. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this, so we're gonna show you best practices of how to do both. Let's go ahead and jump in to Photoshop. So let's go ahead and show you where both of these exist in Photoshop. So we're gonna to go to Image and then down to Adjustments and here you're gonna see all of your adjustments. So brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposures, vibrance, hue, saturation, all these fun things, okay? Those are in image adjustments, and then we have all of our adjustments here. Now, these are going to be applied directly to your layer, okay? So those are adjustments. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about are adjustment layers, and they're found in a different place. So to get to those, we go to layer, then we go to new adjustment layer, and then we see basically pretty much all of the same things. Brightness, contrast, levels, hue, saturation, color balance, photo filter, all the... It's basically almost the exact same list. So you're like, why would you have both? Like, why are there two ways to do almost the exact same thing in Photoshop? Okay, here's the big difference. If you go to image and down to adjustments, let's just say we go to brightness and contrast and I increase my brightness a little bit and I hit okay. That just apply this directly to this layer. But because it's applied directly to this layer, if I wanna go in and change that brightness, I don't really have a great way to do that because it applied directly to the layer. Now, I'm gonna give you a hint here because this is not necessarily a bad workflow to go to image and adjustments, but if you do go to image and adjustments, I want you to always create a smart object first because as we just saw, I'm gonna hit undo real quick, okay? If I go to image, down to adjustments, brightness contrast, and I increase my brightness, boom. It literally bakes that into this layer, okay? So if you are gonna use adjustments, this is not the way to do it. The way to do it is to use smart objects. So check this out, here's really cool. So let's hit undo, control or command Z, go to your layer. Next, we're gonna make it a smart object. We're gonna go to layer, we're gonna go down to a smart object, and we're gonna go to convert to a smart object. So now we can see we have a smart object icon. Now the cool thing is when you have a smart object, any type of adjustment you do to this layer, that can be changed at any point in time. So let's go ahead and check it out now. We're gonna use the same process, but now that it's a smart object, I'm actually gonna be able to change this after the fact. So let's check it out. We're gonna go to image. We're gonna go to adjustments. We're gonna go to brightness contrast, same like we did before. I'm gonna increase my brightness, same like we did before and hit okay. But here's the difference, okay? We have our layer because we made it a smart object now we have a smart filter. I can turn the smart filter off and on at any time, and I can double click right here where it says brightness and contrast, and I can change this setting after the fact. So because we made it a smart object, now I have a lot of control and I can go ahead and change all these settings and I can get exactly what I want. And if it's not perfect, I can double click right here at any time and simply dial that in exactly how I want it. So if you are gonna use adjustments on your layer, not a bad workflow, but make sure you use a smart object first, that way you can adjust it at any time. Now we're moving on to the second type of adjustments. These are adjustment layers. They actually create their own layer for your adjustments. So let's go ahead and check that out. We're gonna show you exactly how to use those as well. So for this, let's go ahead and turn off this smart filters. We're gonna turn off brightness and contrast just to get it basically back to default, okay? Now, remember earlier, we were going to image adjustments and then we were using these adjustments here. Now we're gonna to go to layer, 
down to new adjustment layer. And then I'm just gonna use the same one. Of course, there's so many options here. We're gonna use brightness contrast. So let's go ahead and hit brightness contrast. All right, now here you have a few options. It's going to allow you to change the name. You can use the previous layer to create a clipping mask, which means it's only going to affect the layer right underneath it. This can be super helpful in a lot of different cases. But we're just gonna hit okay. All right, now let's check out the difference, okay? So when I made this adjustment layer, keep in mind, this was our original image. We made it into a smart object, and then I used a brightness contrast adjustment, okay? But the second time, we made an adjustment layer, and that's what this is. The adjustment layer now is a layer that's on top of my image that I can turn off and on at any time. So let's go ahead and check this out. Now I can double click right here on this little when on this little icon right over here for any adjustment layer. They're all gonna have a slightly different icon, but just go ahead and double click there, or you can go right to your properties window. Okay, and now I'm gonna be able to adjust my brightness and I can lower my contrast and I can get my image looking a little bit better just how I like it. Alrighty, there we go. And we're gonna go back and we can see, yes, we've basically kind of like done the same thing in two different ways. But now we're gonna talk about like the pros and cons and the differences of each. Okay, so the first big one is that if I make adjustment layers, well, I can turn this off and on at any time, which is really nice, okay? Now, this adjustment that we did on this because we used a smart object, keep that in mind, because we used a smart object, I can also turn this off and on at any time. Had I not created a smart object, I would not be able to turn this off and on at any time. So that's a big, big thing to remember. Okay, now our brightness contrast adjustment layer, let's go ahead and turn this on. I can still adjust this at any time if I want to. Let's go ahead and turn this other one off here. I can turn this off and on at any time if I want to with the little eyeball. I can double click here and I can change these settings at other times. But what I now have is a mask, okay? So my adjustment layer comes with a layer mask. The regular adjustments do not have masks. I don't have an option to create a mask for just my brightness contrast adjustment that I made. But this brightness contrast adjustment layer, I now have the ability to create a mask. So for instance, let's say I want to make this only visible on her face. So let's go ahead and click on the mask. I'm gonna go to edit. We're gonna go down to fill and we'll just go ahead and say black. Why not? There we go. And I'm gonna use a big brush here and I'm just paint white right over top of her face. There we go. And then now, I've used this brightness contrast adjustment layer and it's only going to show up right on our subject's face. So I can now fine tune certain areas of the photo that I would actually like to edit. So if you wanna just apply adjustments to the entire image, regular adjustments are totally okay as long as you use a smart object. But generally, the workflow that most people wind up using are adjustment layers. And adjustment layers are also super cool because let's say you wanna make a couple of them. Let's go to layer. I'm gonna go down to new adjustment layer. This is one of my favorite ones, by the way. I love creating these gradient maps. You're gonna love them too. Check out this gradient map right here. All right, we're gonna hit okay. Now with your gradient map, it looks a little bit worse. It looks a little bit weird. So we're gonna go to our properties here. I'm gonna click on reverse. There we go, it looks a little better. You can double click here and then you can choose any type of gradient that you want. So like just kind of go through and click on your gradients here. There we go. Obviously you have a huge list. You can choose whatever you want. So let's hit okay. Now this gradient map is super cool because I can turn this off and on and it created a lot of color on my image, but because it's an adjustment layer, I can actually go in and I can lower the opacity as well. So we're just going to take this and I'm going to lower this opacity. And as I go down, I'm just going to get a really interesting color toned image that still allows me to tone my image but it's going to allow me to decrease that effect. Not only that, keep in mind, double click right here, it's gonna bring me into my properties window and I can go in and I can say any of these adjustments that I want to for my gradient map. I can simply click through these and this is a really fun way to color tone your image. Like that one, I really like this one. I think this is cool, it's in my oranges. So you can kind of click through there and see exactly what you want. Go back to your layers. You can turn this off and on at any point in time. 
I can increase my opacity, I can decrease my opacity, I can get just the right mix, and it's completely non-destructive. I can go in and turn both of those off and back on at any time. And again, I could use a layer mask to define where I'd like these to be visible. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, this is a little bit more advanced, are clipping masks. Okay, now let's say you want, you have a bunch of different layers, you're working on a big layered file, and you wanna make sure that like right here, these brightness contrast and this gradient map. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit of text, okay? We'll just call this type. There we go. All right, very, very interesting, right? Uh, our, our type. Okay, now our type color, we're just going to go ahead and uh, let's just make this uh, like a red color. There we go, that's it. There we go, let's make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so this type that I made here, what I want you to see is that we have a regular layer here and then I just put type right above it. But because this brightness and contrast layer is above it and my gradient map is above it, look at this. My gradient map is actually affecting the color of this type as well. Can you see that? It's actually going to go ahead and affect the color of my type and so is the brightness and contrast. And this, I only made it visible over top of her face, but it's actually making the, like it's making the subject brighter and darker too. You can see that here as I turn this off. You know what, I'm just gonna increase the strength of the gradient map so you can really see, yes, it's not only affecting the color of my subject, it's also gonna affect the color of the type. So these adjustment layers, they're gonna affect every single thing underneath them. So here's a really great tip. If you're gonna use adjustment layers, and I do suggest using them because they're fantastic, if you only want them to work like affect a single layer, here's what you want to do, right? Because most of the time you don't you don't want this, right? You don't want it to affect your type. You don't want it to do that. You would want it to only affect this. So what you're gonna do? Let's go ahead and bring our type above everything else. Okay, actually, yeah, we're just gonna bring it there. And then both of these layers, we're going to hold Alt or Option and go right. Bring your cursor right between the two layers. You're gonna see a box with a little down arrow. Go ahead and click there and then click there as well. And that's going to bring these layers, make them clipping masks, okay? So now both this gradient map here, okay? And my brightness and contrast, these are only going to affect the, the layer that they're actually clipped to, okay? They're not gonna affect anything else at all, even if I had other things underneath it so that were transparent. Clipping masks with adjustment layers are a way to make sure that they're only going to affect those layers, okay? I can make that type invisible. We can go back in here and kind of lower this opacity a little bit and get an image that we actually like. But that is the biggest way we're gonna be using adjustments and adjustment layers. So let me go ahead and summarize it. I know this is a lot, and for a lot of us, it's like, why would you have both of these? But basically, one adjustment going to image adjustments and then using any of these, those are gonna be applied directly to your layer. You can use them, just make sure you make your layer a smart object first so you can turn them off and on at any time. Go double click here and change your settings, okay? If you want these separated to individual layers, then you can use layer masks, then adjustment layers are the way to go and you can turn these off and on at any time. By the way, you can also get to your adjustment layers by clicking on this icon here and these will all create adjustment layers. And if you go to window and then down to adjustments, there we go. Let's go ahead and open up this. All of our adjustments, single adjustments here. These are gonna create adjustment layers also. So if you have your adjustment window open, all this will create adjustment layers also. So I hope that clears things up. There's no right or wrong way to do these. There's no one tool that's better or the other. I wanted to make sure to explain both adjustments and adjustment layers and the right workflow for both of them so that you can choose what's best for you and apply that to your images. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a big thumbs up and let me know in a comment right down below what you would like to learn next. And if you wanna get more advanced Photoshop, Lightroom, photography tutorials, check out Flurn Pro. We've got an exclusive discount for you. You can click on the link right down below to sign up today and get every tutorial we've ever made for the last 15 years. Thank you so much. I'll flirty later. Bye everyone.